Alright, so this is going to be my second video on the Omoda E5 and this time we're going to focus just on the infotainment and the driver's display. Together it's a 24.6 inch screen but each is a 12.3 inch screen in itself. We'll start off with the driver's display here. The horn is in the middle and then you have your settings for your cruise control settings and your speed limiting settings and then on the right you have your voice command and then on your right hand side this is the multifunction switch so it'll switch between your tpm tpms so it'll give you a reading of pascal kilopascal and the degree of your air pressure inside each wheel then the next screen is your trip, as well as your average consumption. I'm currently at 15.2 kilowatt hour for 100 kilometers. Trip B, again, another one, average speed. And then you have a map setting in case you have anything set for the car. And then we're back here. You have a voice command button here. And then your volume rocker, which is shown on this screen, is can also be dialed here basically these are your media controls on the right hand side and a center button for just navigating everything then you have your a whole host of settings on the left hand side so basically your wipers are all here and then your rear wiper is also done here your stock controls are here your high beam can also be given through here but the actual beam headlight settings are down at the bottom here which I'll, i've shown in my other video and that pretty much is most of the menus on this then you have your car you have your speedometer on the left and then what mode you're in so i'm currently in eco mode normal mode, normal mode sport, mode. sport mode. mode and then your speed settings are here and then your amount of power so like sorry <laughs> so like the amount of uh, torque I have put is here. Your regen percentage is also shown here. Your ADAS safety settings are shown here. And then at the bottom left, if you can see it, there is the battery reading as well as the estimation for your range. I'm at 79% for 340 kilometers. And then on the right hand side, this one, two, and three is basically your regen levels. I've now kept it at the lowest. Your temperature here. And if you look at the center console, you have dynamic guided steering lines, which will definitely help your reverse. Moving on to the center console now, this is a whole host of information. So let's start off with the center. You have your AC, your fan speed. You can also turn on air circulation. You can leave it in auto, dual zone climate. So one for the driver's side, one for the other. You could sync it too if you want. Then you have seat settings, whether you want seat cooling on and off. And then you have settings as for like how you want your HVAC system to work. You can also, because this is an EV, make the AC work in either eco mode where it'll pull in less battery or a comfort mode, which is quite normal or a strong mode if you're like in a hotter climate usually comfort is enough then again back to the hvac settings again you have rapid cooling and rapid warming in case you're in like sub-zero or like above 30 degree temperature settings you have an on and off button here then we'll move from the left to the right of the screen on the left are your phone and other controls so if your Bluetooth is connected, then you have your media controls here. I have Apple CarPlay wirelessly connected, by the way. So that is probably what's been playing. I'll go back to the cherry menu and then your map. Again, this is your inbuilt system, by the way, at the moment. It has a pretty good sort of map. The car will also come with Apple CarPlay, which is here. And you also have the option of using Google Maps. But as I just showed, you do have an option for just your regular inbuilt car map too. And then, again, this is for your navigation. This is an inbuilt system. 
that I just mentioned, your media controls. This is what's important. Um, your battery settings, your energy settings, your charging, like how much you want to charge the car, your limiter. A good 90% is usually enough. Discharge settings. That because this car does have a V2L function, vehicle to load function, you can discharge the battery in the car via the plug in front up to 30%, but then it'll automatically cut off. It does support up to 3 watts, 3000 watts of appliance usage and then in other settings this is your region so low medium and height so low means one medium means two height means three if you zoom into this part of the screen then you will see that there is a three there and then i'll keep it at low because it's the least intrusive your cruise range can be done in a wltc mode or a dynamic mode Electronic lock with lock function, your tow mode, this car can actually tow by the way, but make sure that everything is hooked on properly. This is a function that most cars don't have. Battery temperature protection can be turned on so that the voltage within the car stays in a certain range temperature wise too. But you need to remember that because these are external functions, more power will be drained from your battery. And then you have an energy saving mode which will really limit your maximum speed ac and other things in case you're really out of range and you like really need to like find a charger then that's your mode for you again moving on you have your vehicle settings now so in eco in ECL normal mode. and mode basically Sport you mode. have a button on the center console for that too down here but otherwise you can also just use the dashboard up here and then you have a vehicle setting. So how much steering, these are all your ADAS settings now. So steering force mode, like whether you want it strong, how quick you want the responsiveness of your steering, open height, you can actually adjust how wide you want your rear boot open. If I do 50%, it can just open up to 50%. Your arming reminder can be here. Your automatic locks can be here main driver unlock just if you want to unlock the driver's door your phone wireless charging can be turned in off so if i turn this off now the wireless charging pad below is switched off your phone forget reminder steering wheel button customization so basically you have a favorites button on your steering wheel that you can customize maintenance tip your maintenance reminders your drive mode memory can also be turned on and then your wiper sensitivity how fast you want these wipers when it gets rainy smart keys basically near to unlock far to lock smart key induction tailgate opens if you stand at the back for long enough the boot will open automatically and there'll be a welcome light if you approach the car again more ADAS settings because this car has a whole host cruise control vehicle departure over speed warnings you can actually do this way low like down to 30 kilometers per hour but nepal probably would be around 50. then you have high beam assist that'll automatically dip the high beam and take it up again depending on incoming cars your intelligent avoid assistance basically gives you alerts about collisions and like front objects that are near you have a front collision warning emergency braking assist lane departure departure intervention lane keep and then a door opening in case you have your door open and there's a car coming nearby then it'll give you a warning a rear collision blind spot detection rear cross traffic braking feel linking to driving mode so basically what sort of feel you wanted <clears throat> and also a brake pitch um, this is something that i will change to low and then lighting settings basically your height so whether you want your height High or low, I think this is one of the most useful things for Kathmandu. Ambient lighting can be like changed between a whole host of different colors. And you can also link it to your music system if that's what you'd like. Comfort wise, your rear view adjustment can happen here, but also via your toggle on the, on the doors, on the driver's door. And then coming back, your Bluetooth phone connectivity. 
Again, there are different ways to come into the same car. The, this is for vehicle settings. This is your entire menu setting though on the Omoda E5. Your navigation, audio, phone, picture, video, in case you have your USB uh, connected to this. And then your energy, basically what we just went through. And then vehicle settings, local settings, and then Apple CarPlay also seems to work pretty smoothly. Your Spotify, your Google Maps, and then just heading back. So overall, this was the video for the Amuda E5 infotainment where you have a driver's display as well as a infotainment system. You can wirelessly plug in your Apple Android device or there is a USB on the left hand side down there that can also be used. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them down below and I'll see you on the next one.